So let's go ahead and get our panelists introduced. Um, so maybe Snoo, you can start uh, at least um, you know, your name, where you go to school, and what you're majoring in. All right. Hi, everyone. Uh, this is Snoo. I am currently a CS major at UT Austin. Uh, this is my first year here, and yeah, but planning to study CS and math. Great. Thank you so much. Um, Paco, would, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, hello, everybody. Um, I'm Paco. Uh, I'm a first year as well studying computer science and business at The Ohio State University. Um, yeah. Fantastic. And last but certainly not least, Croissant. Hello, I'm your resident buttery croissant. I am a freshman at the University of Tennessee, Knoxville, and I am majoring in forestry and psychology. Okay, beautiful. And all right, and I guess without further ado, we can go ahead and get started. Uh, so our first question uh, will just be kind of a, a general question. Uh, what personally made you apply to your state school? So maybe we can kind of just go in the same order. Snoo, would you like to start? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, I applied to UT primarily just because it's like a sport the major that uh, I was planning on. Major in the so CS is famous for its CS program and um, it's close to home basically. And uh, they have free tuition for students from low income families. So that's primarily just what I'm looking for in college. So yeah, that's Excellent. Thanks so much, uh, Paco. Um, okay, well, I, so I'm like, international and I'm out of state so like my reasons were not that it's close to home I chose to apply here because um, I've lived around this area before so I knew a lot of people who came here and um, I like I'm gonna keep it honest I originally applied here as a safety but like when the time came to commit to schools I kind of fell in love with it like I got into like a cool program of uh, the computer science and business program originally I applied only for computer science I ended up adding the business thing later but because I, I got into a really cool program and I was super happy about that and yeah it was those sort of things i got a lot of merit scholarships yeah like i have a lot of merit scholarships it was really cheap for me to come here like more than other privates i got a lot of merit scholarships a lot of need based aid so it was for me really like when the time came to decide on college i thought like this was you know the best place for me to go so yeah Great. thanks so much for your answer and croissant okay um for me i personally applied to the university of tennessee Primarily due to proximity to home and cost, I get free tuition here, which is very nice. Um, beyond that, it is the only school in the state with my major. So, you know, didn't have much choice in that regard. <laughs> Great. Sounds like, uh, yeah, sounds like cost and location are certainly uh, big factors for, uh, for a lot of you. Um, great. Uh, moving on to our next question, which comes from uh, Vampy. Do you prefer having an urban, suburban, or rural campus, depending on which one your campus falls under? And what do you think are some pros and cons of your college's area? And let's kind of, maybe let's reverse the order this time. Chris, why don't you start us off? Okay, well, University of Tennessee Knoxville is an urban campus. It's not a very big city, but it's so distinctly urban. Um, as far as pros and cons go, it's, you're in the heart of the city, pretty much. The university is pretty much in the center of Knoxville. So you have easy access to pretty much everything in the city you want to do. As far as cons go, I would say, if anything, um, if you don't like the city that you're in, you can't really get away from it. Which, I mean, that's not urban specific, but it's still a problem. <laughs> Great, thanks so much. Paka? Um, okay, so Ohio State's also in a pretty urban campus. It's a pretty urban place. Uh, Columbus is like, a, it's a fairly large city, not like a huge city or anything, but it's definitely pretty big. The pros of it, there's a lot to do, a lot of things to do, you know, a lot of people, you know, there's like people, not just college students. I mean, the area that we're in, mostly college students, but like, you know, you can easily go outside, find people who aren't college students. 
you know, you find you find general activities that like any big city has, you know, so all of those sort of things also like connectivity, just because it's a big city, there's like just generally more connectivity, easier to access. I will say the fact that we're in a city means that certain parts of the off campus area can can start to have higher rates of crime just because of like the fact that it's a city and cities especially when we're like closer to the center of the city, you know, like inner city, you can, you can sometimes have a lot of crime in those areas, you know, those sort of things. So you got to be careful, especially, especially cause there's, it's like, you know, there's like always people going around and it's not just college students. There's all, there's people from all types of things. And some of those people are criminals. So you got to be careful sometimes, you know, got to keep your eyes out, especially when you're working, especially when you're, you know, off campus and especially like, as you like start to move off campus, those sort of things happen. But I will say, like, personally, I prefer, like, the urban campus just because, like, it's just so much easier to get places to do things. I've visited a bunch of other state schools that have been, like, you know, in the middle of nowhere. And, you know, they're kind of, like, it's kind of hard to find anything to do except the college. Like, the, the only things that are in that area are, like, the college, stuff related to the college. You know, obviously, like, your your general, like, a couple of restaurants and those sort of things. But outside of that, there isn't much. And I think, like, in an urban setting, you just have so much more to do. And there's something for everyone. Great. Thank you so much for your experiences. And lastly, Snoop. Um, so one of the reasons I really like UT Austin is that it's being a fairly urban city. Austin is, you know, up and coming in terms of, like, being an urban area and all of that. Um, but yeah, I agree with uh, Paco when he mentioned about the crime stuff. Like, sometimes even just around the campus, it's a little bit creepy if you're just Especially if you're a girl and you're walking alone, there will be like creepy people and like um, just hanging out on the streets. And we t- constantly get like police reports, uh, even really nearby campus, sometimes even on campus with like stuff. But I think it's still fairly a safe area to be in um, with campus police and uh, patrols and all of that. Uh, but yeah, it's definitely a problem. But uh, in terms of preferences of like urban and suburban areas, uh, I also visited a couple other colleges, namely Texas A&M, which is uh, a good comparison compared to UT Austin. And when I visited, I just felt really trapped there because of like every building is in this town and this town exists because of this college. And I didn't really like, didn't really like the feeling of being physically trapped somewhere. Uh, but with Austin, uh, as soon as I get out of campus, I'm in the city and uh, I can pretty much go anywhere with like the bus system or just taking a lift. So yeah, I, I really enjoy that. Great. Thanks to everyone for all of their answers. Sounds like uh, we have basically three, uh, three urban uh, kind of campuses. Uh, and, you know, I think that's a lot of insightful answers in terms of uh, uh, you know, things to consider for folks as they're uh, making college choices later this year. Okay, our next question comes from Sandy, uh, who asks, what are the general education or core curriculum requirements at your school? And do you think its presence is a positive or negative factor as you weigh your decisions? Uh, so let's, this time, maybe let's go ahead and start with, uh, start with Paka in the middle. Okay. Um, workload wise, I mean, Honestly, I would say like this is something that's very subjective and up to your major. Personally, um, as a computer science major, our like first year engineering curriculum, I would say I found it like it's definitely challenging. There's a lot of stuff, you know, stuff goes at a fast pace, like like you know, like anyone going from high school to college, stuff goes way faster in college, you know, and like before you know it, you're like covering so much, you're like covering a lot really fast. And, you know, it's that sort of thing. Um and you know the work so workload is like definitely like there there's a lot of workload but it's honestly you can manage it and this and and as an engineering major you definitely feel it although like i know like other people have had like varying workloads depending on the amount of credits they're taking like this semester i have a really high workload cuz i'm i'm at the i'm at the maximum credit limit that you can take without advisor approval which is 18 so my credit load for this semester is kind of high and the workload is definitely very high but like, depending on what sort of things you're doing, it can definitely be very different. So your mileage may vary depending on your major. Excellent, thank you. Um, Snu, why don't you go next? Oh, okay. I can't speak much about the curriculum at my school, uh, just because like 
I'm t- I'm not going through it. But um, I think unless you're set on like triple majoring or like double majoring with two different, very different majors, uh, the core curriculum shouldn't be that much of a big factor in terms of um, which college you commit to. Like at the end of the day, you're there to uh, take classes and you have plenty of opportunities uh, to take classes you're interested in and to learn about the things you're interested in. So yeah, um, I don't think, I don't think it's much, that much, that big of a pressure. Excellent. Thanks so much. And Chris. Okay. Um, the core curriculum here at UT Knoxville, I think it's pretty standard. Like you have to take your writing courses, your oral communications, your maths, your arts and humanities sciences, etc. Um, I like it personally because it lets you take a broad variety of courses, even some you may not have taken um, within your major specifically. But I will say that it does vary somewhat based on your major. Like, the core curriculum, if you're in computer science, is vastly different from my curriculum in forestry. And that is something to keep in mind. Excellent. Thank you, Thank you to everyone for the, all of those answers. Um, OK, uh, next, we have a question about advising. Uh, so how is advising at your state schools? Do you think you get less attention due to the uh, higher volume of students? Uh, and if so, how much do you think that has affected your college experience? Uh, Paco, why don't you take this one as well? Um. All right. So, okay, personally, I will say, I don't know, I don't think this is representative of all students. I will say that I haven't had a great experience with my advisor. My advisor has been somewhat unhelpful, and I definitely think that, like, just because of, like, the fact that CS is a popular major, and they only have two, advi- like, the department only has two advisors to cover a lot. I, I think we have, like, four advisors to cover, like, all, all, all undergraduates, which is not that many. So, like, there's definitely, you know, it's very difficult to get appointments with him. And, like, so personally, I found it kind of hard to get, like, you know, to get good advice out of my advisor. And my advisor has not been very useful. The good thing is there's a lot of people who can help you other than your advisor. And for me personally, it hasn't been a huge problem just because of just because of the fact that I'm in a smaller program. So I have a program specific advisor as well. And she's very knowledgeable about the school in general. So she's able to help me in general. So I think though that's kind of the way to like get around the whole, you know, the fact that things are big and like you might not always get the best experience with like, the general advisors to try and get is to try and explore the sort of programs that we have here. A lot of state schools tend to have like these programs to like make make your school feel a little smaller, get a bit more individualized attention. And those are the sort of things you want to look for, especially if you want a little bit more personal attention in terms of like advising or anything else, really. Great. Thank you so much. Uh, Chris, would you like to go next? Okay. Um... Advising at my school, the quality of it is pretty variable depending on your department. Like, um, let's say you're in a really big department, like computer science or business, you're probably not going to get as much individualized attention. But for me, forestry here is a pretty small department, and they give quite a bit of attention to the individual students. So your modalities may vary in that regard. Great, thank you. And uh, Snoop, last but not least. Uh, okay, I think my school has a, a bit to the extremes in, since I think CS is one of the two biggest majors on here, other than like biology. And like with our advisors, if you want to ask specific questions, you have to like make appointments like three days in advance for like a 15 minute session with the advisor. And it just, it's very extreme. And like with all the appointments, like very rushed, and you basically throw questions at them uh, and they answer in like two times the speed. Uh, but I do want to say like, that's not the case for everyone. Even like my business friends have like 30 minute sessions with just a CS that gets like the shortest of the, straw, shortest of the straws. So, um, and I, to also, I also definitely agree with Paco with how most school, state schools at least have the programs that make big schools feel smaller. Um, and it's the case for UT Austin too. Uh, we have a program called CIS Pod, 
specific with CS majors where you get to share a class with um, other people who also are in the same CS and math classes as you are. So you guys can collaborate, make side groups and everything. And within this group, you have um, pretty much like an hour every week with your advisor and you can just ask questions to them without making appointments. So I think that's nice. But so far I haven't needed to talk to my advisors so much. So even though uh, advising is not really that available, uh, it's not that big of an issue. Great, thanks so much. So it sounds like uh, a lot of variability depending on the size of your department, certainly, uh, and maybe also the uh, quality of your advisor and things like that. Uh, kind of along a similar line, um, uh, our next question is about uh, registration. So competitive registration lotteries and overcrowding are often cited as issues at state schools. Uh, what have your experiences been with all of these? Uh, Snoo, why don't you start us off? Um, right, so I think it's easier um, if you came in with a lot of credits or like AP credits uh, or you're in an honors program, that definitely makes registration easier, but it's definitely a problem. Um, at least if your school is like really big like UT Austin is. Uh, like my first semester here when I have to register for the first time, it was like super stressful. And my advisor was like, make six backup points with your schedule just in case any class doesn't go through. And as like as the second that the registration opens, we were like rushing in and like refreshing the website and putting course numbers and all of that. It was very chaotic. And I ended up not getting the classes I wanted and put on the waitlist. Luckily I got off the waitlist, but like the entire process is just super stressful. Um, but once my credits transferred, uh, I was able to register earlier and it was just so much easier. So um, depending, I would say depending on your situation, there are a lot of ways to um, get around this registration thing and lotteries and overcrowding and all of that. But yeah, it, it's an issue. Great, I think that's very insightful. Uh, croissant, would you like to uh, answer next? All right. Well, registration can definitely be a bit of a bugbear here. Um, to put it bluntly, it sucks sometimes. Again, this is something that will vary depending on the type of classes you're looking for. Like, just naturally, your gen eds are going to fill up quickly because everybody needs them. Your departmental specific classes may or may not be difficult to get into, just depending on your department and the amount of sections it has. Um, like, for instance, if you're trying to get into a general economics class here, that is quite difficult to fill it very quickly. But on the other hand, general psychology, which is also a gen ed, is pretty easy to get into. So again, it varies. Great, and Paka. So my personal experience with um, registration has not has honestly been pretty easy. Um, so I'm in I'm in I'm in the honors program and. What that grants you here is priority scheduling, which means that you're able to schedule around a month before pretty much anyone else can schedule, I think. So that means that I've pretty much always gotten every class that I wanted, like both first semester and second semester, I got both the classes. There was very little stress with getting into any of those classes. And like, I mean, honors is smaller, so like there's a pretty good chance you'll get what you're looking for. That said, I do understand that like a lot of people have had trouble like getting into like especially more competitive or more popular classes. There is definitely definitely difficulty. Like even for honor students, there are a few classes that are very small or only offered in one section every year. And like most most of those classes are capped at like, you know, 36 to 72 students. So with the amount of people who might want to register for them, there's a there's a chance that you might not get what you're looking for. So even as an honor student, although I will say like as an honor student, it has been significantly easier than like other people who are not in it. And like most people like that have definitely had trouble. And I think like this is generally just a problem at like, like as Snu and Krasan have mentioned, this is kind of a problem at state schools, especially if you're not in the, in the aforementioned groups, then you might have trouble registering for your classes and you'll have to, as Snu said, keep a bunch of backups and those sort of things. Great, thank you all. Um, yeah, so again, sounds like there's uh, a lot of variance, but this time um, honors programs and having kind of 
uh, more senior status helps a lot, and uh, maybe also a smaller department. Um, okay, our next question um, has to do with living on campus. Um, Sandy asks, is living on campus required at your school? If so, for how long? And if not, is it difficult to get on campus? Um, on campus housing. Um, Chris, why don't you uh, take the lead with this one? Okay, well, from my understanding, historically getting on campus housing here as a freshman at least was not difficult, because that has changed in recent years. Myself personally, I was entirely unable to get on campus housing, so I was forced to seek other options. Um, and from what I gather, that's a bit of a problem in general at large state schools because they have a tendency to over enroll. I mean, that will vary somewhat depending on the specific school, but housing can be a bit of a conundrum. Great. Uh, Snoo. Uh, yeah. So I don't think living on campus is required for my school, but uh, freshmen are prioritized in terms of getting on campus housing. And um, typically, uh, this is also a question, but I would definitely recommend freshmen to live on campus from personal experiences, just because uh, when it's your first semester uh, on campus, you know, taking classes and trying to adjust to college life, living off campus might be a little bit too much, where it's like you gotta uh, be kept up with your own bathroom, buying groceries, uh, keep all the rent and everything. With uh, on-campus housing, living in dorms, it's just a lot of issue taken out of your hands, and you can just focus on going to your classes instead. So yeah. Excellent. And okay. Um, I don't think it's been I don't think it's been particularly hard to get housing. Like so, okay, just to so first of all. Our housing is, uh, you're required to live on campus for two years, I think. I think pretty much everyone is, unless you, like, can get an exemption because you're commuting or, like, you're, uh, well, there's a, it's pretty easy to get exemptions. And I honestly don't know why they do it like that. It's it's kind of an oddity even amongst state schools to, like, do, you know, two years, two years at a time. But you can pretty, you can pretty easily get around that, you know, and uh, it's not that hard. Um, I will, I think, um, so, yeah. It's not generally difficult to get it, although like as as like as is the case with a lot of other places, private and public, there's definitely a lot of contention for like some of the best dorms. You know, a lot of the best dorms fill up quick. Like you gotta be fast. You gotta be fast to pick them up and get into those. Versus like, you know, and like I wasn't, so I kinda got a bad I kinda got like not not such a great dorm to live in first year. But yeah, it's kind of like that, and I would say there it's not it's definitely not difficult to get into on campus housing. Great, thank you all for those uh, for those answers. Um, kind of the converse question now: um, How do you feel about the off campus housing options at your school? Uh, let's go ahead go in the same order, I guess. Um, so, Chris, if you want to start off. All right. Um, in regards to off-campus housing here in the Knoxville area, it's not bad. Um, relatively affordable. It's about comparable to on-campus housing prices. Could be even cheaper depending on the area. The only problem with it is, unless you find yourself like a part of the shuttle system to campus, which some of them around here do have, um, you are going to need a car. Because at least Knoxville has pretty bad public transportation. Great. Uh, Snoo, so how's your experience been? Uh, so I'm in the process of like apartment hunting right now. So I do have some thoughts on this. So generally, uh, from what I've seen in especially city areas, uh, you can save a little bit by going off campus, but it's not that much. Especially if you count in typically what's included with on-campus housing is a meal plan and you can just be on campus with like unlimited meal plans and stuff, so it's pretty convenient. But going off campus, you do get the liberty of like not having to share a bathroom with 20 other people and uh, getting your own shower, uh, having your own space, that kind of thing. 
Um, but it just it's a stressful process to go through, uh, especially when you're apartment hunting, uh, with the roommates, and um, you have to check out the apartments yourself, uh, just to consider uh, like other um things that affect your quality of living, like noises. Uh, some apartments literally have like mold in them, and uh, whether the management is actually doing their job there. So it's, you, you've got a lot to consider with off-campus housing. And to me, there isn't a definite win between on-campus or off-campus. And I mean, if you have the money, you might as well just go get yourself a single room on campus. I think it's the best solution, but yeah, it depends on your situation. Great, thanks. And Paka, I'm not sure if you have uh, maybe also some thoughts, especially because you uh, sounds like you will need to be on campus for at least another another year. But um, <clears throat> well, I mean, I I will say I'm not experiencing this now, but just what I've heard is off campus housing is generally what pretty much every like junior and senior looks for. Like living on camp, like you can get off campus housing a lot cheaper than you can get on campus housing here. So pretty much everyone. Is, is going off campus by their junior year and their senior year, especially because we got to pay for two years of on-campus housing. Um, I think the off-campus options, they're, they're pretty nice. Honestly, you can get like a room to yourself. You get to like share, like generally you get to share like, you know, a fairly large house with a lot of other people. It's honestly kind of fun. Like you, you get to enjoy a lot, you know, and it's the one thing is it, it is a definitely a little bit further away from the school then like on campus options so you might be walking a little more and like those sort of things but i think in general like the off campus options are pretty good and it's definitely something that at least at my school i will definitely be considering and most certainly will be living in after my you know at the start of my junior year and into my senior year great thanks to everyone for those answers sounds like um definitely Living off campus seems like a great way to save money, but maybe some uh, additional caveats um, you know, attached that you should consider as well before that. Um, yeah, okay, so I guess kind of um, building on this kind of the, the, this thread of um, kind of uh, living with, with friends and kind of having that uh, community away from campus, uh, Vampy asks, what is the community like at your school? And is it hard to make friends? Uh, let's go ahead and start with Snoo this time. Um, I feel like overall, the atmosphere of my school is pretty welcoming. There are a lot of clubs you can join or spirit groups, sorority fraternities and all that. Um, and I never felt like it was hard to make friends. Usually people are pretty well, like open to conversations and uh, just talk about whatever. Um, when you when you guys get a chance or have a comment about that kind of thing, um. So yeah, I think I I don't think I particularly thought about this. It just seems very much. Great, thanks, Paco. Do you have any uh, thoughts on that? Um, I personally think like the community is great. Um, you know, there's something for everyone. Like the the thing about a lot of these places is that they're huge. There's a lot of people. You know. Like, to give you an example, we have, um, I think we have 40,000 current undergraduates and 8,000 of those are freshmen like me. So there's a lot of people, there's a high chance you'll find someone who's interested in what you're doing, what you're looking for. So in that sense, like, you know, it's not like, like at some smaller schools, there's definitely, I feel like, and from what I've heard, there's definitely the chance that like, you might not find exactly what you're looking for, especially if there's like a niche, but like, if you're, over here, there's like so many people that there's a high chance you might find what you're looking for. I personally don't think it's ever been very hard for me to make friends. Your mileage may vary, of course, but I think most people are very open, very welcoming, you know, very likely to talk to you. You're not, and most people shouldn't have prob problems, you know, especially if you're like willing to like put in a little bit of effort, like go out, you know, go out if you step out of your dorm, you know, talk to people on your floor, in your classes, go to clubs, those sort of things. You do those sort of things, you have a pretty good chance of making friends, you know, forming a great community. Great. Thank you for that. And lastly, croissant. Um, I would probably echo the previous sentiments largely. Um, 
with most state, state flagships at least, they're very large schools, which means naturally they're going to be people you don't like, people you will get along with. But I feel like with enough effort, you will find your, um, you will find a, a good friend group, regardless of your interests or identity. Great. Yeah, sounds like generally positive experiences all around. Um, okay. Um, speaking of positive experiences, uh, Mingu asks, what is one really cool thing that you've done at your state school that you're proud of? Uh, so let's, why don't we start with uh, Paka this time? Um, I'd say one of the big, one of the biggest things that I'm proud of at my, that I've done at school so far was um, I went to the OSU hackathon. That was in um, October, I think, or it might have been early November. I'm not really sure at this point. It's been, you know, it's been a while, but I went there. It was, and it was a great experience to say the least, you know, you know, lots of great people, mostly from my school, you know, great people, really smart, um, a lot of support, a lot of people from various companies showed up, you know, a lot of networking opportunities, and we built a cool product. And um, yeah, I'm I'm pretty happy to say that I'm pretty proud of it, mainly because like, I think I placed pretty well, you know, got a I got like a pretty decent prize out of it. And I learned a lot from like a lot of people got in touch with the community at my school. So, so yeah, I'm pretty happy. I'm pretty happy with how that went. And I'm very proud of it as well. That sounds amazing. Um, Chrisant, how about you? Well, to put it bluntly, I've mostly been focused on academics during my time here. However, I will say that just, um, in general, I think that at a lot of state schools, you meet a lot of really qualified and talented professors, and getting to learn from them and know them is just a really cool experience in general, which you'll find there at most schools, but they're just so large that you find such a wide variety there, and it's interesting. Very nice, thank you. And Snoo, what have you been proud of? Um, I think just generally being willing to step out of my comfort zone. I think that's something really big for me. Uh, since I came from somewhere really rural, I never had the opportunity of uh, living in a big city with just all sorts of things available to me around me. I never learned how to take advantage of that. So um, I, this like past semester, I learned how to just uh, plan my own weekends and like and just be willing to do things I never tried before. Uh, just like oh. You know, there's a Taylor Swift club. I'm gonna go join that club, or like there's a Mahjong event. I'm going to go to that event. So it's just um being able to uh be open to all kinds of possibilities, even though um you've never considered them before. So yeah, that's something I'm really proud of. Great. Those all sound like amazing things to be uh, to be proud of. Uh, maybe kind of question on the. Uh, uh, on the opposite foot, um, what is something you would change about your school? Um, let's go in reverse order this time. Snoo, why don't you start us off? Uh, first thing that comes to mind, honestly, the yellow buildings. Like, uh, I think my school pushed down like the Gothic architecture in like 1900s or something, and then they built this brutalist architecture, and honestly, not a big fan. So yeah, like I just I just don't want to be surrounded by like yellow and beige all day long. And it's just kind of tiring. Like you guys can have some diversity. <laughs> yeah, that's that's my answer. Great answer. <laughs> all right, how about you, Chris? Um, I think one of the biggest things I would change about my school itself, um they focus a lot about rec on recruitment and freshman retention. But after that, from my understanding, they don't seem to care as much about your, their continuing undergraduates, which I feel like is a problem if you want your students to stay at your school. Absolutely. Um, and Paka, your thoughts? Um, I wouldn't say I have, like, there's not that much I'd want to change, honestly. I really love it here, but, like, I would say if I, if I had to pick one thing, um, the fact that we so in like certain engineering majors, there's capacity constraints just because of the fact that there's a lot of students and we do have like, you know, slight problems with over enrollment. So that means there can be significant academic pressure to achieve certain GPAs. 
to like get into certain majors, especially if um you know you're trying to look for um a CS major, um you know other sorts like majors like that you know that are tend to be very competitive. You definitely you know you have to like keep your GPA up, and at times there is some pressure to like make sure that you're there and like not slacking off. So yeah, that sort of thing. Excellent. Thanks to uh, everyone for your for your answers. Um, okay. Uh, next, we have a question about workload. Um, I imagine this one will have uh, diversity of answers. Uh, but what is your what is the workload like at state schools? Um, do you have free time? And if you do, how do you spend that free time? Uh, Paka, why don't you lead for this one? Um, workload. It's definitely not been, it's definitely been kind of hard for me. Like I've had a lot, I've had a lot of like difficulty balancing it. I would say, honestly, this is more my fault than anything else. Cause I'm just not great at managing my time. I, I think a lot, I think like, as you know, as, as this goes for anyone, like you, you can definitely, there are definitely ways to have a lot of free time. Like I've had a lot of free time, you know, the ability to go to a lot of social events, to go to, to have a lot of fun with friends outside of class and outside of those sort of things. So I think if you manage your time well and do your work and, you know, just stay on top of your stuff, the workload is definitely manageable. Even if you're taking a lot of classes and doing a lot of extracurricular activities, there's definitely still time, like no matter what, to like do your stuff. Great. Thank you. And Snoo. Um, I think the issue of workload comes down to your goals and prioritization. Um, so for me, um, I pretty much just stick with my classes and uh, maybe join a couple fun classes here and there. And I do have plenty of free time. Uh, but I also know my some of my friends who might not be in like a course load heavy major like CS, but they um, would join career fo- like uh, organization that focus like pre career. I, I forgot the word, but anyways. Um, they would like um uh, they would join programs for entrepreneurship and engineering and things like that that's outside of their own major and uh, take on part time jobs and all of that. Um, so at the end of the day, uh, it depends on what you are looking for, but the workload is manageable and you will have free time. Uh, it just it it's up to you how you spend it. I mean there are a lot of options, but. Um, if you mean like free time for socialization and then free time for yourself, um, it it is up to you how you allocate that time. And uh, yeah, I know. And for my school, a lot of people do party over the weekends. Like when I go back to my dorm on Fridays, I just see swarms of people coming out of the dorm in party outfits. Like it's a it's a very common thing. And um, yeah, I, I just I there I don't know I don't want to say you just have you have free time you will have free time, and uh you will have a lot of ways to uh, decide how to spend it. Great and croissant, your thoughts about uh, workload and free time. That is another thing that is going to vary, which applies to a lot of things here it seems, um largely based on your major of choice and if you are going double major. However, I would say it's definitely manageable. Myself, personally, I'm double majoring, but I still have quite a bit of free time. And while I do not personally, a lot of people here work alongside of their education. So clearly it's manageable. Great. Thanks to everyone for their responses. Uh, Now a bit more of a uh, lighthearted question. Uh, Mew asks, have you ever met a famous person on Canvas? Um, Snoo, why don't you go ahead and start with this one? Uh, no, but, um, they, they played the video of, like, what, what's his name, Matthew McConaughey or something? Oh, like, welcoming ceremonies and everything, and, like, his clothes getting made into, like, t-shirts, and it's just, like, uh, it's, it's a big thing here on campus. Um, I, um, for me, personally, uh, one of my friends, Rume is apparently a famous actress son. Uh, I met him in person too, but it's just like they just seem like normal people very rich, you know? So it's it doesn't it, it doesn't stand out that much. Gotcha. Thanks for your answer. Um 
Uh, Paco, why don't you uh, go next? Uh, I personally have not met any famous people on campus. Like, <laughs> yeah, I, I honestly, like, I, I really haven't met anyone who's, like, that famous. Or at least I didn't know if they were. Like, yeah. Nice. And how about you, Chris? <laughs> Well, I've not personally met anybody famous. However, we do semi-frequently have at least relatively famous guests, so the possibility is there. Okay, unfortunately sounds like uh, knows all around. Uh, but maybe maybe one day in the near future. Um, okay, um, next question comes from Salt, or The Salt. Um, why do people discount state schools even if they have good name recognition? I would think that one would get as good opportunities at a good state school as an Ivy, plus better sports, food, dorms, etc. Um, Paco, why don't you uh, start us off for this one? Right. Well, honestly, I think it's just because, like, a lot of state schools are like easier to get into like the vast majority with the exception of a few state schools most of them are easier to get into and like people want to feel a little honestly i'm going to say like this is going to sound a bit blunt but a lot of people want to like be able to like flex their schools and like that's like one thing that a lot of people you can't really do with a state school you know like it's not as exclusive because a state school is designed to meet the needs of its people it's designed to serve the residents of a particular state so it's not you know it's not just it's not just a school it's des it's designed for a specific purpose so you know it's not as prestigious there's not even though they have great name recognition like my college i know it's recognized all over like the country i've met people from all over the country who you know recognize my school know where it is and know a lot about it and honestly i'm going i'm going to say that our opportunities as far as i can tell compare very well to a lot of top privates like this is like my like my school is not even like like you know that it's not even like the top state school or anything it's 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 pretty well ranked in terms of rankings and it's a pretty it's a really good school but like even so we get a lot of great opportunities you know you you name any company or like any field graduate school placements these sort of things a lot of people i've personally known anecdotally have definitely gotten into these sort of programs and you definitely can't do it coming from a state school and personally, I'm a big fan of going to like the sports games, you know, football games at my school are very fun. This isn't for everyone, of course, but I find them very fun to go to. Um, the food is great as well. Um, obviously, this varies from school to school. You know, my school has great food. I like the food here. And the dorms can definitely are definitely really nice. Again, mileage may vary. And I think we discussed this, but, you know, mileage, so you definitely have a lot of these sort of things. I will say that in, just because of like the community, the school spirit, and the fact that like we actually have really good sports teams, like you know, quick plug for our our, our football team, we are we're, we're the best. Even though recent events may not indicate that, um, it's definitely very fun. The atmosphere is great, and I would personally choose to go to a state school over like a private school at this point. You know, anytime. Great, thank you so much for your um, for your answer. Um, Croissant, would you like to uh, add anything to those thoughts? Um, as far as people discounting state schools, I feel like that is less of a, a phenomenon than we think around here. Applying to college, the Discord, and the subreddit for that matter, are a bit of a bubble in that regard. I feel like most people in the real world, unless you're going into a particular field like finance or academia, don't care that much about if it's a state school or not. Opportunities of bias. There are quite a few. It's going to vary somewhat on a school to school basis, but like, if you want to do research, then there are an immense amount of opportunities here. You just have to reach out to your professors and try your luck with that. Beyond research, um, as far as employment goes, we have regular career fairs and such here, so if you want to talk to employers in your field, especially like in STEM or business, that is definitely viable. And, um, as far as outcomes, that's also variable, but my department at least, my main department of forestry, has very high career placement after college. Excellent, thank you so much. And Snoo, um, any final thoughts for us on this question? Um, I definitely with Kursan, in terms of HSC being in a bubble, 
I think um at some point there is this notion of like how impressive, quote unquote impressive your school is is correlated to how low your school's attendance rate is. Um, and I think that's not that's not really true. And uh, uh, in like in this like of, about the statement that one would get as good opportunities at a good state school as an Ivy, I think that's very subjective too. Um, it heavily really depends on what you are looking for in the future and what your own values are, right? And um, what the opportunity cost is, all that kind of stuff. So it, it's just very subjective to say that, but at the end of the day, you don't, you know, whether you go to state school or an Ivy, you don't just get like job off and internship off, hand it to you. I guess you have to apply, you still have to um, put in work um, and demonstrate your skills, go to interviews and all of that. So it's a process that everyone has to go through. And um, about like better sports, I don't, I can't really care less about sports in contrast to Paka. So I don't really know about that. Um, food and dorms, it's just very school specific. Like um, definitely schools that have more like assets and fewer students will invest more in terms of their um, living conditions. But overall, I don't think I've heard of a school where it's like literally unbearable conditions and um, it shouldn't be something that affects your life that badly. Great, thank you all for those answers. Uh, next question is along similar lines. Um, do you wish you went to a smaller school for any reason? Uh, Krasnat, why don't you take the lead for this one? Okay. Um, I would say that overall, I think I would personally prefer a somewhat smaller school. Maybe not a, like a particularly tiny school with like a thousand students, that might be a little bit too small, but there are definitely downsides to being in a very large school, like a lack of personalized support from your advisors and such, which we've touched on previously, but it is still worth noting. On the other hand, um, the advantage of being in a very large school like this, as previously mentioned, is there are a lot of opportunities as far as employment and research and the like goes. Excellent. Um, Paco, why don't you take the uh, next answer to this? Honestly, just I, I don't think so at all. I, I love it here. There's like, you know, the fact that it's big means that there's so many different things I can do, so many different groups of people that I can talk to and lots of different things that I can do here. And for that reason, I don't really wish I'd gone to a smaller school. I go to like the third. This is, I think, we're the third largest university in the country, and I wouldn't have it any other way, you know, in in particular, I think like the fact, I think a lot of it is helped by the fact that I'm in a small program. Uh, we only have 36 students a year, which means that, you know, there's like a good chance that like, you know, I have a small community of friends and a small, like, you know, the, the I, I have like the feel of being in a small community while at the same time, the resources and the community and like the spirit of like a bigger school. So personally, I would never, I would never choose to go to a smaller school having experienced this. Excellent. And Snoo, how about you? Would you have preferred a smaller school? Um, I think uh, I agree. I gotta agree with Chris that uh, there's nothing inherently wrong with being in a big school. Um, it just comes down to what you're looking for. But I really don't think it affects too much. And being in a big school opens you up to all types of people, and um, you get to interact with all kinds of things. And um, yeah, I don't think I would change it. Fantastic. Sounds like um, everyone is, uh, at least in a lot of respects, uh, kind of happy with the size or at least grateful for some of the kind of opportunities provided by that, uh, you know, by the size of their schools. Um, and maybe the kind of last question along this, this line about, you know, this comparison um, between state schools and, and, and uh, private schools. Um, Tal asks, what made you choose your state school over other uh, other admissions that you might have gotten? Um, and, you know, maybe kind of more specifically, you know, what what made you um, commit compared to your the other kind of admissions offers you you were comparing um, at the end of your senior year? Um, 
Uh, Snoo, why don't you take the lead? All right. So, uh, what made me choose baseball? So basically, um, my list was very top heavy, and uh, UT just came down to the uh, to be the best option naturally, overall. And I think all my other acceptances are also public. So yeah, it just it was not very debatable in terms of. My Great. Thanks. And croissant. Well, all of the schools I applied to were public schools, so couldn't really go to a private school in that regard. Um, aside from that, the reason I picked this particular one were largely because A, proximity to home, it was the closest. B, um, overall, just academically, it was the highest overall in quality across a wide range of disciplines, particularly because, um, or, sorry, which I found it, I found interesting because I was not entirely set on the major I applied for, which turned out to be a good decision since I changed majors repeatedly already. <laughs> Great, thank you. And Paka? Um, uh, honestly, I, I must be frank, I didn't really want to come here at the beginning. I had, like, I didn't really want to come here. Like, this was not something that I was very excited about going to. Uh, that's changed a lot, as you can probably tell by now, over the past couple of, o over the past couple of like you know, months over the over the past semester, it's become a lot better. But I ended up choosing it because of the financial aid that I received, um, the program that I got into, and a lot of other things. And those were sort of the things that finally got me excited about coming here. But for a very long time, I did not really want to come here, and. It wasn't something that made me very happy, but I'm very happy now, and I'm very glad that I did choose to come here. Excellent. And uh, probably the last question we'll have time for, uh, as we're getting kind of near to the one hour mark, um, what would you want other applicants to know before they also commit uh, to a state school? Um, I guess, Paco, why don't you lead for this one? Mm, all right. So what? We're, honestly, I would say, like, make sure that you know you want to go to a bigger school. A lot of state schools are generally bigger schools, you know, so you make sure you're willing to, like, you know, deal with that sort of thing. And, like, being in a very large group of people, being, like, like there's, you could, there's definitely a lot of ways to get involved in smaller groups and, like, you know, be like that. But just know that it's definitely not going to be as small as, like, you know, it's definitely going to be very, very different to your high school. Like most high schools are not this big, whereas like state schools are massive. There's like thousands of people, you know, everywhere like you will. So, you know, it's definitely that's something that you definitely should know. Um, The other thing is please, like make sure that you research like your particular major and like getting into it. I know for a lot of majors at a decent number of state schools, they're capacity constrained. Like I know um, uh, UT Austin, which SNU goes to, um, they have pretty big capacity constraints on CS, like getting into CS is very difficult there. Uh, the same goes here. And honestly, a lot of other state schools as well have like these sort of problems, you know, with like capacity constraints and those sort of things. So make sure you know that and make sure like you, you want to like major in whatever you've gotten admitted for. So those sort of things are very important to know. Excellent, thanks so much for that answer. Uh, Snoo, would you like to uh... Give your thoughts and maybe also comment uh, on on the UTCS um, uh, comment that uh, Paka just made. Right. Um. So I definitely agree with Paka. I think that's very that's a very good point. Um. I also see like some people asking questions about like committing to a school even though they didn't get the major they want and hoping to transfer later. Uh. Just make sure that it's something like easy to do because. Is capped at some schools, um, as we mentioned, and you don't want to get trapped in a school doing a major you don't want. Um, and I think more of like a personal note to like uh, people in A to C is that state schools aren't any lesser, and um, just because you know you may be committing to a school that has a high acceptance rate or not in like top whatever. Um, on US news rankings, it doesn't mean that um, there's any impact 
on your self-worth and um, your future is not determined by uh, at the end of the day uh, it, it's up to you and it's what you make out of it so yeah don't don't let the bubble trap great thank you so much for uh for that insight and uh croissant would you like to uh kind of give your uh thoughts and also the kind of the, the final thoughts for our ama today all right um as far as things you should know before applying to a state school first off i want to address the financial aspect oftentimes people will assume that their in-state public schools will be cheaper for them and that can definitely be true it was for me but I would definitely assess all of your options to determine if you would actually get better aid from a private or a public, because that will vary depending on your own financial situation and any potential scholarships you may acquire. Um, besides that, and this is related to the overall fact that it, you'll be going to a larger school most likely, the fact of the matter is, especially in general education courses, your class sizes will be large, potentially very large. Like in my general psychology course for this, the fall semester, had 350 people, which was a bit overwhelming at first, to say the least. If you like that kind of environment, then good, that's great. But if you think, think you won't like it, then it might be a problem. Although that can be offset if you get into an honored college, because they often have smaller class sizes. And great, thank you so much, Croissant, and uh, as, as well as all of our panelists for their thoughts on, on that question, as well as for, um, spending their time with us here today. Um, thank you to all of you in the audience for coming and for submitting questions. Um, and we hope you have a, a good remainder of your application season if you are uh, applying this year or um, could rest um, good kind of lead up to that if you are not applying. Um, and yeah, again, please um, join me in thanking all of our panelists for uh, donating their time today. They're all regulars uh, on the ATC server, um, and I'm sure they're more than happy to share their other experiences uh, in, in chat after our AMA ends. Thank you, everyone, for coming, and have a good night.